All right, let's get to it. All right. Guys, today's demo is gonna be pretty fun because uh, this is kind of when we start to really see things come together. Once you have all of your pieces cut out, and actually this applies for your drawer pieces and your case pieces, we're going to collapse them and we're gonna pre-sand all of the inside faces and only the inside faces. Once we get, uh, if, like if we were to glue this entire thing all together, there's all these drawer dividers and all kinds of stuff going on inside the case of this project, it's really hard to get your hands in there to both sand and stain. So uh, we're gonna do that ahead of time. We're gonna break all of our pieces down, sand and stain, only the inside faces. And because there's joinery in here, we want everything to be super square, sharp, crisp, etc. So we're gonna use a sanding block. You guys can go back to the scrap wood bin, cut yourself a sanding block that fits your hand nicely. And I'll get you guys some fresh sandpaper. Start with something coarse. I've got some 120 here. I'm gonna put it in my vise. Okay, you guys can do this on the vise uh, on your workbench as well. And just really, really flat without coasting over the ends at all, we're gonna sand this. Doesn't take much, that's probably fine actually. We're gonna switch to the 220. And there we go. Okay, so that is beautifully sanded, smooth, done. Uh, and you can see how that compares to the rest of them. It just a whole lot nicer. Uh, as far as the case pieces, this actually makes a big difference on how nicely your drawers will slide in and out of the case too. But it is important to actually do a good job on this. I have chosen uh, this provincial color of stain. You guys are welcome to use any of these yellow colored tins in the stain room. Um, just a word of caution, if you are using something well, actually all of them need a stir, but especially the ones that have some pigment in them, they have a color. It's actually a powder that the, the manufacturer adds to it. And over time, all of the granules of color and solids, they'll settle to the bottom. So that needs a bit of a stir before, they, before you use it. Okay, just like that. Now we're gonna get organized here. You guys are gonna apply the stain with a paper towel. This needs to stay super neat and tidy. Uh, nothing like big crumpled up ball, like that's not gonna work well for you. So take a piece of paper towel and fold it up, make yourself a nice little application pad just like this, okay? Um, it sounds cliche to say less is more, but I'm telling you guys for real, this is um, so true in this case. This is a penetrating oil stain, which means it absorbs into the wood and everything else that doesn't absorb into the wood, too much stain, it sits on top and it dries and becomes super gummy and it does not feel good. You have to end up scraping it off and you'll spend way more time trying to scrape off and clean up excess stain than you would just to apply it to begin with. So super light amounts and I have just a tiny little bit like a small dip on here and you're just gonna rub this into the piece keep on rubbing it the whole thing needs stain until it doesn't absorb anymore and actually one one dip for each of these drawer pieces is is plenty one tiny little dip that's all it takes so less is more here is also good for another reason. Um, this drawer still has to be glued up, which means uh, I don't want any glue, or sorry, I don't want any stain inside the finger joints because if it's, all, if it's got all kinds of stain in there, uh, it's oily and waxy and stuff, the glue is not gonna stick very well in there. So we're not gonna get a very good glue joint. So you really want uh, these fingers all kept nice and clean. If you have a whole pile of stain on your rag, you're gonna get runs that just flow down this thing and it's gonna be nasty. 
that piece is done. You guys can continue. Well, actually, you would you would pre-sand everything first. I'm just showing you the next step uh, to go to your stain. Make sure that the lid is on your stain can before you put it away. That goes back in the yellow fire cabinet. That can go away. You're going to let that piece that you just stained sit for about 10 minutes. Let that stain absorb into the wood. And then you're going to come back with a fresh paper towel. This, can be, this one can be crumpled. We're just going to buff off. Buff off all the excess. You should be able to handle this piece right away. This is very different than from like a, what we call a film forming stain or like a paint where obviously you, you wouldn't want to touch that surface until it dries. Penetrating oil stain goes into the wood, buff it off 10 minutes later, and it's like good to handle, good to touch, right? So in that way, it's actually really nice for us because you can, at the beginning of class, go do your staining, um, buff it all off, and then take all of your pieces out of the stain room and go stack them in your locker. And actually, this is a, a good example here of um, I have a patch here that looks a little darker. Do you guys see that? That is where there was uh, probably a low spot, maybe from the thickness sander when we were prepping stock or something like that. So my 220 did not get in this area. The smoother stuff out here absorbed less stain than where there was deeper scratches and a coarser sandpaper out here. So that's actually a really good example. Um, I'm going to go back and fix this, obviously. This is a really good example of where, especially if you're using a darker stain, um, all your imperfections will show. The scratch marks uh, will definitely show up more when you're using darker stains. So just a tip for that. I have my other drawer, my other small top drawer already pre-stained. And I've got all four of my pieces here. And we're going to also do uh, the assembly of the drawer. So as far as the drawers go, the reason, the main reason that we're actually pre-sanding, pre-staining all of the inside faces of our drawer is so that we can use some raw wood. In this case, I'm using uh, an aromatic cedar. I've already prepped these drawer bottoms. This is just uh, a super nice smelling wood. I have a bunch of different cedar that you guys can use. I have aromatic cedar. I have red cedar, I have yellow cedar. Strangely enough, they're all kinds of cedar, but they all smell completely different. They all smell actually quite nice. I love opening up a drawer and you just get that smell, right? But in order for that smell to happen, uh, we can't put a stain on here. So these drawer bottoms remain completely raw. I want to make sure that I don't get any stain on here, which is why uh, we want to have everything pre-stained beforehand as opposed to assembling it and trying to mask off with tape or something this drawer in order for us to stain the insides. It just is messier. So we're going to dry fit this and uh, we're ready to glue this together. Okay, so we got a tiny bit of glue there. We can just wipe that right out. Just like that. Because of the stain, the glue doesn't stick in there. You, you want to make sure that when you're making the panel, 
that it's not too tight. If it's too snug of a fit, it, you are gonna have such a hard time trying to glue this thing up. Okay, so that is perfectly square. That's right where I wanna be, okay? Let it dry and then you can sand all your outside surfaces. That's the finished drawer.